The views on this program do not reflect those of ONTV or its board of directors. Welcome to OAA Now, your home for Oakland Activities Association news and information. Here's your host, Sammy Terrier. Welcome to OAA Now here. I'm Sammy Terrier, blogger of across the OAA, of around the OAA, uh, one of the hosts of Between Terminas and host of Last Week Brain Cells on Ordinary Television. I got Ian Locke here back. Um, welcome back. It's been he, like, uh, feels like it's been a few weeks. It's been like a month. Yes. Yes. Um, yeah, and I have to say something. Uh, you you host in so many shows and write art, so many articles that you can't even keep them straight. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so, um, but anyway, I'm glad to be back in the chair pushing mm-hmm. the buttons for you. Yes. Um, I have a lot of catching up to do. I know you, you, I know, I mean, ever since the food drive, I mean, yeah. I know it's been like, been, been busy, busy, busy. Yeah, it's crazy. Like, uh, a lot of, you know, our listeners don't know. Uh, you know, we mentioned the food drive in one of the episodes, and we proponent. It's a, it's like a big Super Bowl for us. It's a huge yes. community project for us, mm-hmm. and it's weeks and weeks of preparation, and then it's weeks and weeks of get back to normal and pick up the pieces of all the things that were neglected while you're getting mm-hmm. ready for the food drive. Yes. So, uh, can I share the results? Go right ahead. Uh, yeah. So we did really well. So any of you out there listening who donated, thank you so much. Um, our goal is five thousand dollars. We raised. Raised over seven thousand, and uh, so it was a huge success. And uh, the other goal is to collect enough uh, physical donations, non-perishable items, to fill our production van, which is a big ProMaster, big truck. Mm-hmm. We filled it twice. Beautiful. So, uh, Beautiful. yeah, it was a huge success. We had a good time. Sammy, you sat in on our sports day. Yep. Uh, with Joy Tysick, uh, our production coordinator here at ON TV. I look forward to his um, views of the sideline um, NCAA tournament. Bracket, yes. Uh, I think I'm going to be part of that. Because talk about March. I mean, I know uh, it's coming up, but March March Madness, it feels like it's here after that weekend in college uh, basketball. We have it this it week in high nuts, school sports. And it's coming. It's right? coming. We start girls basketball but, this yeah. evening, and then we have boys basketball next week. Yeah, it's it's this time of year. There's something in the air. People feel spring's coming. I don't know what it is, but um, – Watching the college, what bedlam? Who's beating whom? I mean, it was just mad, mad, mad basketball craziness going on in the college realm. Mm-hmm. But like you said, the high school game is kicking off. I mean, this is the winning time, right? Yeah, I, mean, I mean, like high school sports, you know, and high school basketball. I mean, there there are upsets that can happen. Yes, and there's teams that are trying to prevent those mm-hmm. because they're trying to win their league titles. Mm-hmm. And uh, you, I know on the girls' side of things, pretty, things are pretty much wrapped up. It's all set. The matches are set for the night. And, uh, yeah, it's tonight. It kicks off tonight. So how exciting is that? Mm-hmm. And I'm, I'm glad I'm coming back at this point because then I can hear who's who, where, and get the rants from you, mm-hmm. and I can shake my head. You know, on an audio file, and you can't see it, but I'll go, I'm shaking my head. But we have, but, we, but we're, on, <laughs> we're on video, you know we what are, I mean? We are, and, uh, but I'd say the core uh, consumers of uh, the pro, your program, Sammy, are on SoundCloud. They uh, they are subscribing. And, to sh- uh, and, you know, New Year, yes, we're almost into the third month, starting the third month in the new year of 2022. Uh, this podcast, OA Now, Sam, uh, is the number one listen to podcast in all of Owen TV's uh, arsenal of podcasts Beautiful. being posted. Yeah, Beautiful. so you go anywhere from you know twenty eight uh, subscribers listening a week um, up to one hundred and twenty, and and then you even have others on you know YouTube mm-hmm. and all that good stuff. Plus the viewers that have been watching on VOD. Mm-hmm. So um, yeah, you're doing great and. Um, People are digging it, and you've got your fans, and you have your enemies. I was gonna say enemies, I was gonna say, but we'll say mm-hmm. enemies. But mm-hmm. that was that's what makes it fun, and it's all good fun. And I, I, you know, how much? What other fun can you have besides being mm-hmm. on a podcast with you, listening to all the good stuff you're chatting about? Mm-hmm. And it's March Madness, Madness for the high school Schools. game. Yep. it's exciting. It is. It is. Uh, we got a lot of basketball scores to talk about this week. We got a breaking news story out of Troy Athens. Um, new coach over there. Um, so a lot to get through. Um, you want to do the weekly roundup, Mr. Yeah, yeah, let's do the roundup, shall we? Yep. All right. All right. 
only four pages for me, wait, you know, waiting for me when I come back in. Yes, uh, the sports ticker, we've been running that. Yes, all very season. good success. I think we finally have settled on a look. It's been all over the place. trying. Mm-hmm. To, it, it's a lot harder than I thought it was going yes. to be to get set up. And mm-hmm. I apologize for our viewers. But uh, it is set up, and we will post these results also on the ticker. But mm-hmm. let's get into it, okay? Uh, w- like you said, on the girls' side of things, we are wrapping Yep. Uh, we are wrapping we up the game regular season, season. And now we're in postseason for the girls. Boys, one more week. Yep. So how did the final uh, uh, regular season look on the girls' side of things in the OAA basketball world? Well, Farmington 72-19 over Pontiac on the 21st. Uh, Madeline Bedwick had 13 points. Bartlett had 11. And Hankins uh, had 10 for Farmington. Avondale 34-27 over Oak Park. Oak Park still trying to find that offense. Mm-hmm. It's been all season. Yep. Troy 66-47 over Southfield A&T. Zyder with a monster game, 29 points. Safaka had 16 for Troy. Clarkston 47-29 over uh, Stony Creek in a solid win there for the Wolves. West Bloomfield 66-13 over Groves. Sydney Hendricks had 15 for WB. Any comments on those games? No comment. <laughs> <laughs> 13, ouch. Mm-hmm. Uh, on the 22nd, Harper Woods, 60-17 over Oak Park. Shake my head at Oak Park going, what happened to the mighty Oak Park? Mm-hmm. Seahome, 45-38 over Ferndale University. Farmington, 63-7 to over Ferndale. That's a legit score? Yeah. You're kidding. Yeah. Wow. Okay, Avondale, 44-35. Five over Pontiac, Berkeley 52-39 over North Farmington. Maya Jones and Ashley Loon had 17 points each for Berkeley. Stella Leffler had 14 points for North Farmington. Oxford 49-27 in a, a beatdown of Lake Orion with two runs with uh, two con- runs conference title uh, yeah. I- uh, implications there too. Uh, Sophia Rab, 17 points. Uh, Kayla Casper, 11 points. Miranda Wenenko, 10 points for Oxford. Just a solid outing for the two Wildcats. Runs. That's, all I gotta, that's all I need. Two runs. That, was, that game. Two, First quarter and then the third quarter. Wow. Rochester, 39 29 over Bloomfield Hills. Adams, 57 41 over Troy Athens. Abby Dranick had 21 points. Samantha Blaine, 14 points. Madison Kessman, 11 points for Adams. Royal Oak 43-34 over Southfield Arts and Tech. Anna Waterstrett had 13 points. Regan Blackwell had 10 points for Royal Oak. Clarkston 51 over uh, 45 over Groves. That went in a, overtime in a solid win. West Bloomfield 87-53 over Troy as uh, the Lakers continue to show their dominance. Mm-hmm. On the 24th, Seaholm 57-30 over Harper Woods. Avondale 44-39 over Ferndale University. Reagan Lawrence had 13 points. Savannah Schmidt had 12 points for uh, Avondale. Ferndale 34-27 over Oak Park and a little better offensive outing yeah, for Oak Park. good win for Ferndale. Good win for Coach Al Catala in his Absol- first win in the season. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. And what do we have here? North Farmington 30, uh, 53-46 over Troy Athens. Rochester 45-25 over Lake Orion is slumping Lake Orion here in the late in the season. That's a concern. And it's a wor- not a good way to go into the tournament. Nope. Uh, Oxford 41-29 over Adams in a dominant win. West Bloomfield 68-20 over Southfield A&T. Clarkston 68-31 over Royal Oak. Stony Creek 43-29 over Groves. And Troy takes down Holly 58-19 to round out the regular season. For the girls. You're shaking your head? Uh, Troy should not have played that game against Holly. Oh, I forgot one. Ferndale University 57 over Melvindale 22. Yep. Is that a makeup game? Yeah, that was, no, that was a regular season game. Regular season game. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right, on to the boys. On the 21st, Lake Orion 66-45 over Holly in a solid win. Alden Ritten, 18 points. Uh, Granberry had 12 points. C.J. Witt had 11 points for Lake Orion. Oak Park 71-47 over Detroit University Prep. And a good win for Oak Park. On the 22nd, Adams 51-50 over Clarkston in the stunner. That was a good game. That was a really uh, good game. Walters had 15. Mims had 12 for Adams. Ferndale and North Farmington, no score? They did not play that game. They're still trying to find a day to make that up. Trying to figure that out. Okay. 
Uh, Waterford Mott, 69-60 over Rochester. That went over 10. Solid win there. Bloomfield Hills, 54-47 over Farmington. A brand chick had 17 points for Bloomfield Hills. Hartham Tramick, 60-36 over Troy. Athens. Is that a surprise win? No. Avondale, 56-52 over, uh, over uh, Royal Oak. Marshall Dennis had 21 points for Avondale. And we're moving on to the 23rd. Wow, these are a lot of games. Mm-hmm. <laughs> hey, you're getting, making up some games, too. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, we had some cancellations, mm-hmm. snow days, and all that good stuff. What do we say on the 23rd? Detroit Country, Country Day, 64-43 over Oxford. Royal Oak, 69-31 over Garden City. Grove, 65-43 over Detroit Community. Ferndale University, 85-15 over Dearborn Riverview West. Mm-hmm. I don't even know who that is. Uh, that's uh, Dearborn. <laughs> thank you, Sammy. On <laughs> uh, 24th of uh, February, we had Avondale 56-51 over Pontiac in a tight one. Anthony Howard had 12 points for Avondale. On the 25th, Clarkston 53-39 over Farmington. Nate Steinman had 19 points. Zach Austin, 18 points for Clarkston. North Farmington 55-41 over Adams. Ferndale 63-52 over Oak Park. Bloomfield Hills, 56-51 over West Bloomfield in a tight one. Yep. Branchick, 19 points. Vince Cantry, or Canty, 13 points. Ahmad Taylor, 11 points for Bloomfield Hills. Rose, 54-40 over Stony Creek. Lake Orion wins, 63-48 over Troy, and a good win there for the uh, Dragons. Morrow had 25 points. Granbury, 13. Alden Ridd, 11 for Lake Orion. Fairless had 23 points for Troy. Rochester, 55-45 over Oxford. Troy Athens, 70-33 over Seaholm. Uh, Seba had 26 points in a dominant performance. Uh, Christian Jamoa had 11, t- 11 team points, 11 points for Troy Athens. Hunter Baldwin had 11 points for Seaholm. Berkeley, 39-29 in a low-scoring affair against Southfield Arts and Tech. Sharif had 13 points for Berkeley. Ferndale University, 42 to 36. Jonathan King had 17. I lost my place. Uh, Chris Kendricks had 16 points for Ferndale University. Dylan Hoffman had 17 for Royal Oak. Harper Woods, 58, 56 over Avondale and a squeaker. Yep. Uh, Harper Woods, overall, how are you doing? They're leading the goal right now. They control and their own that's destiny. Kind of, that's kind of how you saw it, didn't you? Yep, they, lead their, they control their destiny. On the 26th, almost done here, Sammy. Uh, Adams, 55-34 over Stony Creek. Gunnar Walters had 18 points. Justice Mims had 14 for Rochester Adams. And the final game of the roundup here, Pontiac, 55-34 over Ferndale University. At the crush for Ferndale U. And that is the OA roundup. Ow! A lot to look at this final week of the of the regular season, the boys. A lot to look at. Uh, yeah. Um, <laughs> I know we got um, we got some breaking news here. We got to talk about obviously breaking news. When's the last time we had breaking news? Troy Athens football has a new football coach. His name is Thomas Cook. He takes over the position from coach for Coach Billy Keenis, who is now the new football coach at Holly. Um, I Cook, still can't. I still can't wrap my head around that. That is so bizarre. Yeah, I mean, like Cook. Cook, we know um he's been um he's an assistant on the boys basketball program at Athens. Um he is a um he's been around the track and field program at Athens. Teacher in yeah. the district. Um I'll tell you what, I really like this hire that Athens made with Cook. I, I, I really like this hire because the experience that he has, teacher in the district. Yeah. Um he's been around the program, he knows he I mean, he knows the program inside out. He knows the kids. Um, he knows the problems they got to address. I mean, I absolutely love this hire. I mean, I know a lot of people last week, and you know, I said about the Royal Oak hire. Uh, yeah. I mean, like, <laughs> I got you, some you concerns laid in, there. You laid into them. But here with Athens, I, I absolutely love this hire. I mean, because he's paid his dues. I think he's ready for uh, he's ready for this job for this for this job. Yeah. Um, Athens has got a very good team coming back. Um, they still got to find a quarterback. Um, 
but they got the receivers. They got a very good running game. Line's okay, um, but I really, really like this higher Tom stuff. Really yeah. do. Yeah, it's and we've seen teams uh, that pull in house or at least familiarity with the school district. Mm -hmm. Your teacher, I mean, you, they have vested interest in the success mm -hmm. beyond just the field, right? Yes. They know the kids. They have relationships with these guys. You know, mm -hmm. it's it's beyond just X's and O's. And and more times than not, you see hires like this, they last a while. Yes, they do. Right? And I really like this hire of Cook because, one, he's a teacher in the district. Two, Knows the kids. He's been an assistant under Keenis. Yeah. Um. So I don't really expect the transition period to really be as, you know, but there will be a coaching period. There will be a transition yeah, period. Yeah, always. And we, we've seen it on mm -hmm. multiple teams throughout the OAA. But I just don't see it here with Athens. I mean, like, yeah. I really think that Cook's the right guy for this job. I really do. I know a lot of people look at Dave Brown. Um. Would have been a pot, would have been a great fit as well. I mean, Thomas Cook, you know what I mean. I, I really like this hire. I mean, yeah. like I've heard a lot from my outside sources that um about about what Cook brings. It's a great hire. I mean, like through and through. I mean, like I really absolutely love this hire. Yeah, um, yeah, and you know, I'm glad they did it now. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, a lot of these schools are making their decisions. They're not waiting. Um, we've seen. And we've seen some schools that kick the can. Sure. And I, I know uh, what uh, we're transitioning into the spring season, which means, you know, you know, within what, yeah. a week, couple of weeks. A couple weeks, you got track season track starting begins, up, lacrosse starting up. Baseball, you all got that. Baseball, softball. All that great stuff we can do outside. I mm -hmm. can't wait. I know. But it's, it's good that they're making these decisions now because you know the unofficial. Mm -hmm. Workouts are going to start. Mm -hmm. The guys are going to start lifting. They're getting together and having yep. the foundation there. Yep, building right the foundation now. there right now. You know what it, I mean? It, it pays dividends. You Absolutely. Know, that's the unseen thing you see in right. teams, right? This, right. Having stability. Mm -hmm. This is where we're at. The kids move on. Right? Yep. So good. For that's them. my take on Troy Athens. The higher there. Um, we're going to keep an eye on that Clarkson situation a little bit. We're going to keep an eye on yeah, that. Yeah, you, you and I are going back and forth on that. I know. We'll talk um, too, about too early to say too rumors. early to say rumors, yeah. but we'll we'll leave that for another day. I'll say this: if if that happens, I might have to buy you lunch or something. Mm -hmm. Um. <laughs> all right, let's go now. From let's go to basketball now. Of course, we got big, big basketball tournaments looming. Obviously, yeah. the districts were announced for the boys. Um, you know, we'll go over that. Um, I want to get your thoughts on the girls' districts, Ian. Um, obviously, when you look at I know I'm gonna. I'm trying to. I like, know, I know. It, it, we're coming back to the whole A, B, C, D thing, and we're we are actually going to see the results of that. Yes. And if there, and if see a, how many people get slapped in the face. Uh huh. If there's a team that really got slapped in the face, I'll be honest with you, it's Oxford, because Oxford finished. They had the number two NPR in their district, and they would have been the number two seed. Had not the MHA decided to put the matchups a week earlier in advance. So now instead of Oxford getting a bye, um, either playing the winner of Flint, Kersley, and Lapeer, they now have to play Grand Blank for a second straight year. I mean, So they're penalized, they're penalized for finishing the year strong. Yes, they're penalized for finishing the year strong. So if you coach Rachel Breyer, you have a young team. And the fact that you have to see the top seed in your um, and the fact that you're the um, you're the C team in the district, and C has to play the two seed in a five team. I mean, if you're if you're Rachel Breyer, you gotta be going like, what? What? You what know, have I done so, to deserve this? But that doesn't sound like coach. No. She wouldn't say that. I know, but I know that's what she has to be thinking. Well, you're thinking, but you're not going to say it. And you know one thing? You use this as motivation to go, look, this is a bunch of malarkey, man. Go win. Prove yeah, it. Yeah, but you're taking on a Grand Blank team know. that is really that just won the Saginaw Valley. Um, that's one of the top teams in the Saginaw Valley League. And they got some really talented players on that team. Yes. I mean, if you're. I know it. 
it's unfortunate for them. And just before we went on the air chatting about this whole ranking system, Mm -hmm. you had uh, all season to put these numbers together. You have this whole system Mm -hmm. to assign numbers and rankings and all this stuff. Why are we and then talking you go, oh, ABC? I go, well, we got the first seeds. Forget everybody else. It doesn't make sense. I go, if you have them, use them. Yes, I agree with you there. I agree with you there. Like, if you're Oxford, you get you get sentenced. You know what I mean? You got to go to, and now you get to go to Davison and play Grand Blank. Yeah. And Davison ends up getting the number two seed out of this whole thing. <laughs> that doesn't sound right. Because of their... The because, way they spell their name. Because the way they spell their name, you know? A number two seed. If The way they spell their name, you know what I mean? Like, think about this. You know, like, uh, if you, that's, I, it doesn't make any sense. If, you, if you're going to do the NPR matchups, why don't you just wait until the entire season, you know what I mean? Until well, the end of the I year. Mean, why do you have to wait a week ahead before you, um, before you make Well, they already know where they're going, right? Mm-hmm. They just don't know who they're playing. Yeah, they just don't know who they're playing. They know where it's they're not going. like they would be bouncing them over to West Bloomfield or bouncing them somewhere else. They know where they're playing. They know what their district is. Mm-hmm. It's just a matter of who they're playing. Correct? Right. Correct. Use the numbers. You have them. You have the stats there. You had the NPR. Use them. It's not like they needed to have uh, to stop counting on the last week of the season. Mm-hmm. Uh, to notify everybody and give them a chance to get ready to go travel someplace. Mm-hmm. And you look at the other matchups here. I thought the um the district at Waterford Kettering is actually makes a lot of perfect sense. I mean, I mean you have Abna versus Pontiac. Um, that winner's taking on Waterford Kettering. Um, and then you have Waterford Mott versus Clarkson. Um, Ooh. I really think when you look at this district here, don't be surprised if Avondale gets the district final because. The reason why I say this is because, yes, I know Roy Christian pretty well. And they got two players in Reagan Lawrence and Savannah Schmidt. And the fact that I think they can go in there, if they can play some defense in that game against, I mean, like, I've got confidence they can knock off Pontiac. Um, but if their game, if they played Wad for Kettering, and they've got to play some defense. I mean... <laughs> Markea Holland's a very good player for Waterford Kettering. I mean, there's not a question there. I think Avenue's got a chance to pull off an upset there. I really do. Um, now, on the other side, I feel bad for Coach Marcel Scar and Waterford Mott. They got absolutely no chance against Clarkson. Absolutely oh, come on. no chance. Unless they play, you know, the, you know, I've seen teams play stall yes. ball. You know what I mean? Oh, I hate that. I know. But no shot clock. I know. No shot clock. You know? It can work. It but can. you got to get that lead. You got to get that lead. And then you got to hold it. And the question is, can they? I don't think they're going to. Because Clarkson, we know they got Manny Sikorsky, Izzy Hadley. Um, scores. Yeah. They got proven scores. Yeah. Um, so I think in that district, until anybody touches Clarkson, um, no one's beating them. Um, I think if there's a team that could do some damage in their district, it's Farmington over at, um, Farm Tales Mercy. Yes, Farm Tales Mercy is the favorite. And, but Farmington's got really nicely drawn here. They got Redford Thurston, not very good. Um, and then you have that winner's taking on Lavoni Stevenson. I've seen Lavoni Stevenson play. Yeah. And they don't wow me. I don't think they have an answer for Anna Barrett. Um, Did you let them know that they don't wow you? No. <laughs> um, but I think Farmington's got a great shot to get into the district final. Now, the on the other side, you got A&T taking on Farm Tales Mercy. We've seen A&T all year. Yeah. I mean, like, I mean, they look very good against bad teams. Yeah. And then when they play good teams, they get blown out. Yeah. And... To me, that is not a recipe of winning. No. That is not. <laughs> no, uh, in, in any venue, no. you know. Mm-hmm. Um, you hope for the best. You hope for the best. And you're hoping for improvement and stuff like that. But um, like we said about what? When we watch these teams, usually by what? The fourth week? Mm-hmm. You get to know them. We know who they are. Mm-hmm. And, and A&T, it's pretty much longer. It was a little bit longer figuring them out. Yeah. 
I mean, I, I wasn't really impressed with them with the competition they played and all that fun stuff. But a and is going to get sentenced by Fire and Field for Mercy. Mm-hmm. I mean, I feel bad for Royal Oak. I mean, in their district, because they got Detroit Renaissance in their district. And we know how good Detroit Renaissance is. Uh, yeah. And then, but Berkeley, I think, has got a shot. I mean, Berkeley, yes, they got the number two seed. Um, then they're going to have to deal with Detroit Mumford in most likely in the um, district semifinal over there. I mean, everybody says, well, you're not going to touch Detroit Renaissance. You're not going to touch them, you know. I think Berkeley's got a shot. Um, but even though, but, uh, but everything's against Berkeley in their district, though. Yeah. Because if that Detroit Renaissance, it's, and if, let's say, if you get the district final, you're playing the whole school, you're basically playing. It's, home game. It's a home game yeah. for, you know, it's carbon copy. Yeah, that's tough for Berkeley. Any yeah. district. Yes, it is. When, you know, and we've seen teams in the OAA take advantage of that. Sure. Lake Orion for a number of years. Yes. Districts held at, at their place. Yes, and Lake Orion's got another district um, over there. Yep. Um, I think you got a shot at that thing. I think you got a. I think you got a shot to win that thing. I really do. Um, Come, they're limping though, coming off those last two games. Being on the road, playing two tough teams. You know what I mean. Um, the problem with Lake Orion right now to me is their mental mindset. You know, it's you know, and you and you you can see it. You know, you can see it. Would you say that? Uh... Mm-hmm. That uh, OA division has been just a, White? W- a war. Oh, yes. I mean. And especially with everything they've been through. I mean, you know, and I think that, um, I think, but I think Lake Orion's got a good chance here. And I think the reason why I say this is, yes, Stony Creek has been playing good basketball. But, you know, look at the fact you have Rochester on the other side, and then you have Stony Creek on, um, on the uh, on your side of the bracket, it and it's a dangerous matchup for them because you know it's always hard to beat a team once or three times. Yes, I mean like it's always really hard, yeah. and you know Lake Orion's got that opportunity. You yeah, know, you know Lake, each other so well. Mm-hmm. Lake Orion plays Adams first, and then that winner, you know, and I mean will take on Sony Creek. You know, it's always hard to beat a team three times. Yeah, and. For Rochester, same thing. But I think if Ro- I think Rochester has to be an upset alert. If if they get Utica Eisenhower in the next round, I think Utica Eisenhower's got a shot at him. I mean, I've seen Utica Eisenhower play. I don't trust Rochester's guard play at all. Yep. I know they got two very good bigs in Kylie Robson and Alice Mack. Um, but that is a game I think Rochester will have some trouble. Because we don't know how these two freshman towers are going to do in, you know, in the postseason. Yeah. I mean, this is much different it, from middle school. It is, school. but also, Sammy, I mean, they mm-hmm. aren't just coming off the bench. Right, they started. Right, mm-hmm. and this isn't the first game, second game of the season. Mm-hmm. They're at the tail end of a— right. Right, of elbows and knees and the right. bruises and the beat. Right, you're not a freshman any longer. No, no, no. And then on the top, you have Stony Creek. You know, we know the experience they got. Bolt Prairies. You got Mia Carson there. Yeah. You got Emily Flynn there. You got um, I mean, I'll tell you. I mean, they got a good team over there, Stony Creek. Yep. They got a really good team. So, I I said this before, in the district, I said three teams have a shot to win that district, and I still believe that three teams have a shot to win that district. I mean, and that makes for the fans mm-hmm. and even the outside observers it makes mm-hmm. it fun. Yeah. Absolutely. Right. Because it's wide open. Wide open. That district at Lake Orion is wide open. Now, when you look at a district like Detroit Country Day, you know what I mean? Where there's a, it's a 14 district and you have Detroit Country Day, Ferndale University are the two top seeds. Ferndale's the three. Detroit Jalen Rose Academy is the four seed. I mean, you know. So it'll be interesting to see what happens there, but I think it's going to be Ferndale versus um, a oh, Ferndale University versus Detroit Country Day. I, I just don't think anyone's touched Country Day. No. And then over at um Harper Woods, you got Harper Woods, the number two seed, St. Clair Shores South Lake is the top seed. Um, so when we look at Har- and Harper so South Woods, Lake is the top seed. South Lake is the top seed. Yes. Um, when you look at South Lake, I mean, like um, obviously this district here, um, you know. I think they got a shot here. They they take on the winner of Detroit Denby, Detroit Osborne, and then the winner of Harper Woods, um, 
will take on well Harper will take on the winner of East Point and Harper with Chandler Park Academy. Harper Chandler Park Academy has really been a team that's been giving pain to Harper Woods in the yeah. past few years. But yeah. this is not the same Harper Woods Chandler Park Academy team that's been in the past. So I could see it being a Sinclair Shore South Lake versus Harper Woods district final possibility. That could be a real possibility there. Okay. That'd um, be an interesting one. It is. But I, I really if there's a team that really has a lot of pressure on them to win this district, it's Troy. Because Troy, we so know. So it's a uh, district champ or bust. For them, it is. Because for Troy, this is the deal. You've had three postseasons. You have not gotten past the first round or your first game. You have not gotten past it. I mean, both, they lost two years to Utica. They lost one year to Rochester. That was last year. You have a very good senior class. You have five very good seniors. You just got Alyssa Van the back. You just got, you have Charlotte Sobaka. You yeah. have Kendall Zyder. Yes. Elena Zessis. Names we've I been mean, calling names for we've years. Names we've been calling for years. I wonder what some of those career numbers are for them because. Really good. Ha- Very I mean, good they numbers. have to be. Very good numbers. You're up in the red this year. Yeah. I mean, despite your record, you went 9-11 and 11 this year. Now it's put up, Yeah. you know, time for them. And I'm saying this right now. You have Troy Athens in your district. They should get by Warren Mott. Now they would play the, I mean, like, and then on the other side, you have Warren Woods Tower or Warren Cousino, and that winner is going to, and, and, and on Warren Woods Tower and Warren Mott, that winner is going to get Warren. Goodness, see my, Warren, my <laughs> Warren's mixed up. Goodness. There's a whole lot. Warren Cousino is the top seed in that district. Troy's the number two seed. Okay. Um, but Troy, <laughs> Troy, Athens, I think it's going to be a really interesting game because those two teams played earlier in the year. Athens won that game um, 41-39 at Troy, Athens. Now, Troy didn't have Alyssa Mantusa in that game. She's going to be back for that game. Okay. So, for me, if Troy doesn't win this district, I don't think they're go- They're not going to win another one. I just don't think they're going to win another one. This is their year to This is their year noise. to do it. This yeah. is their year to make noise because they lose a lot next year. So, if you're truly a supporter, you know what I mean? You got to put everything on the line in this game. Everything on the line. I mean, we're because of not they're not a great team, but they're not a bad team. So for Troy, this is a golden opportunity for you. Don't blow it. <laughs> that's what I would say to that's what I say to Julius Porter's team right now. Yeah. Just don't blow it. You know, the last you you've got histories against you. You got so many things, I mean like against you. You know, it's now or never for you. It's now or never. Well believe it. I mean they know. Mm-hmm. They know these teams know, right? Mm-hmm. You know the the teams that have those solid upperclassmen, uh, consistent mm-hmm. players for years. Those those players know. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know when you played and when we were on team. I was on a team that was super freshman heavy when mm-hmm. when I you know I started swimming and things, and we got killed. We were the worst. Well, you were uh, a dreadnought. We, well, we were. We didn't even have a pool, mm-hmm. you know. But it was like it was led by freshmen, and and then you get to your final year, your senior year, and you have years of experience and grizzled seasoned veterans, and you sit there and you go, "This is it." Mm-hmm. You know, your motivation changes. But if you're Troy, this is ba- this, this is, is it. it. If you're and Troy, your motivation this is, it. is is not it's gotta be there. It's there. It's it's now or never. I, I'm going to say it is there. It's, it's now or never for them. Yeah. I mean, we'll see what happens there in that one. And then you have the yeah, kiss that's... of death. <laughs> then you have the kiss of death district over at West Bloomfield. Um, you know, this is Mary Cicerone's last year at Birmingham Marion. Oh. Um, I didn't know that. Yep. And then you have um what who just they just won the Catholic League postseason title. Getting they're getting healthier. Mackenzie Swanson's back for them. Um then you have West Bloomfield in that district. Um you got North Farmington versus Bloomfield Hills. That winner's taking on Birmingham Marion. And then Groves versus Seaholm. That winner's taking on West Bloomfield. I mean, I'm calling it now. If it's not Birmingham Marion versus West Bloomfield, I'd be wrong. shocked. I'd be shocked. Completely shocked. I mean, that this And that's going to be a good, be a good game. game. That'll be a really good game. Yeah. Um, West Birmingham Marion's got the size. West Bloomfield's got the quickness. Um, so 
I'm curious to see because you know Marion's gonna be playing inspired basketball. Um, it's coaches last year there. Yeah. Um, West Bloomfield, we know last year they didn't even make the postseason because of COVID nineteen protocols. Um, but we know West Bloomfield is a legit state title contender. Did you yes. beat Detroit Edison a couple weeks ago? That's a huge statement right there. Um, so if you're so I think West Bloomfield and I and I said this on Do you here, think it's theirs to lose? Or do you district, think it's too tight? I think it's too tight. But if they do win that, um I could see West Bloomfield posing a problem for Heartland. I really do. I mean and I said this last week and I said um I said um Sydney Davis is a much better player than um I gotta remember I gotta remember who I was for Heartland. Yeah. Um but I, I did say at on air personally, I still believe that. Um you know, and you mm-hmm. know, before we get to after district, mm-hmm. we still got districts. We still have districts, so yeah, we still got districts to talk about. Yeah, so with West Bloomfield, just to dig a little deeper. Yeah, you got both Davises, both Hendricks sisters, just scoring, machine. and you got Hooper there as well. People can, I mean, that team can score absolutely. And like you said, uh, was it Marion? Yeah, Brian Marion. Yeah. So you got Marion size. West Bloomfield speed, athleticism, yep. mm-hmm. and scoring. Yep. What would you take? I'd take the speed. I would take the speed, quickness, athleticism. Because if you can run them out of the gym and you, mm-hmm. you do it early. Yeah. Yeah, that's all she wrote. You know what I mean? And I think, Because their defense is good enough. They're good enough. They're quick enough. I mean, Coach Darren McAllister's done a really nice job of that team. I mean. You don't want to get in a, score, a shooting contest with those guys. But. Mm-hmm. It's all about, you know, and we said it's about it, all the teams in the district it, it, this time of year, what is your defensive makeup? Yep. Because defense always trumps mm-hmm. offense. I'm, always does in the I'm girls' sorry. game. I'm mean, sorry. Always seen, does in the girls' game. Because we see high-scoring teams get smacked and look pedestrian against absolutely. teams with solid defensive fronts. It absolutely is. I mean, you know, and I think, you know, that district is going to be very interesting. Yeah. You got a rematch at Little Caesars or from Little Caesars Arena between Groves and Seaholm. All right, cool. That'll be a good one there. Um, And then North Farmington, Blue Bay Hills. Um, don't be surprised if North Farmington gets upset by Blue Bay Hills. I wouldn't be very surprised. Um, But those are the districts around the OA. I yeah, mean, it's exciting. I'm mm-hmm. looking forward to the uh, – I'm, I'm – I'm, you know, we usually talk about who you're watching. Yeah, what district are you watching? I'm watching Oxford. Um, At Davison? Yeah. I'm, I, if they can knock off Grand Blank. What a great story. That would be an upset. That will be upset of the year. If that great happens. story. Mm-hmm. But um, but I'm also uh, – that West Bloomfield really intrigues me. because That district? Not that I'm picking a front runner and, you know, that sort of thing, but they've been interesting all year. Mm-hmm. And you love those teams that are – that have – Rounded into shape last year. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, the, this team has been around. Mm-hmm. And you know what you're getting. And everybody else knows what you're getting. Can you stop them? Mm-hmm. Oh, and that Heartland player I mentioned oh, yeah, about yeah. that um, that I said that Sydney Dave was better was better than Amanda Roach. Okay. Mm-hmm. So that's the um, one I that was on air, you know, allowed to tip my tongue. Yeah. Um, But um, I'm watching the Lake Orion District because – See, that's Three my teams. third. That's yeah. my third in. That's the one I'm keeping an eye on. Can Lake Orion can Lake Orion find that mental toughness back? Um Yeah. You know, and that's the one I'm keeping an eye on. Um you know, but if there's a team that's on upset alert in that district, it's Rochester. I mean, you know, I'm curious to see how they do. Let's say if it's Utica Eisenhower that they get in the district semifinals. Um yeah. that's upset alert right there. So I'm going to mm-hmm. I don't know if I'm going to amend my complaint. But we're talking all the different placements and all the seedings and all these different things. Hey, hey boys basketball did the seedings there. I know. We're going to do that next. That's right? next. But before we move on to the guys, just having a chance to digest the women's because it's happening. Yes. Right? Is should I amend my complaint about the ABCD? You should. Because – doesn't seem like the, – the one year they had, like the start of this thing, we looked at it and go, man, there are a lot of teams that seem to be just scratch your head. Why are they there? That doesn't make sense. Mm-hmm. I only see a couple mm-hmm. that are out of place. Lake Orion's one of them. Yes. Um, Oxford. Oxford is another one, yes. But are, are we manufacturing outrage? Yes. 
You think so? Yes. You just want something to complain about? Sure. This is what I'm going to complain about because Lake uh, Orion. No, no, when we say manufacture, it means are we making, uh, are we getting grumpy for nothing? Yes, we're getting grumpy for nothing. You think so? But <laughs> then again, but, okay. but. I didn't expect you to say that. But, but, <laughs> if you're going to do this NPR seedings, yeah. seed everybody. Yeah. I, it's, seed it, everybody. Yeah, it's there. You you have this you have the system in place. Just use it. Mm-hmm. Use it. Yeah. Use it. You know what I mean. Anyway. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we're at forty one. Let's go, the boys. <laughs> um, sorry, okay. sorry. We got region district six. He has to be at East Point. You got Denby versus Osborne. That winner's taking on Chandler Park. Um, Harper Woods versus East Point. That winner's taking on South Lake. South Lake, the top seed. Harper Woods, Chandler Park Academy, the two seed. I think there's four teams that can win this district. Whoa. Um. I, it's either going to be South Lake, um, Chandler Park, Harper Woods, or um, Denby. So, uh, is that the most wide open? That is wide district open. You've ever we have so far. Right now, yes. I mean, I really think that Harper Woods again. This is the guys. Yeah, Harper Woods controls their own destiny in the gold right now. I really think if they can get their um, act together, you know what I mean, like in a non league, I think they could pull off some wins here. I mean. Chandler Park Academy is not the same team they used to be. Um, Salt Lake's a pretty good team, but I don't think they've seen the competition that Harper Woods has. Yeah. Um, Detroit Denby, we know they play in the public school league. I mean, so it'd be really interesting to see what happens there. Here's a question for you about uh, Harper Woods. First uh, year in the OAA, right? Yes. Basketball-wise, have they performed up to your expectations? We kind of talked about it when we were you reading know the, what? Ru- I'll in be the rundown. You honest with you. Um, Though they leave the they leave, leave the, the gold, gold, and you predicted. I that. said that they would. Um, the girls they wa- they were second in the blue behind um, C home. Um, but I really think, I really think the record for the girls is a little bit more deceptive. Um, in which way? Low or high? Lower. Um, because they're not conference. I don't think it was very good. Okay. Um, but on the boys' side of things, you know. I really think they had a really tough time adjusting to Tuan Porter early on. I think they're starting to now. Um, you know, the experience factor there that they have. Um, I really think that they're building something right now, but I think they still got a lot more work in time. But as far as them settling into the I rigors of the OEA, well. I think they did I think well. I think they're settling in. I um, think so, too. Mm-hmm. I really yeah, it do. wasn't like some shell shock. They come in, and it's like, ugh. Mm-hmm. You know, they're prepared. They, they're prepared. They're a solid team. Mm-hmm. Um, right, I was just curious. Yeah, but Harper Woods, really pro-prepared. Um, District 58, this will be a country day. You got um, Ferndale here. This, they're the top seed. They got Detroit Old Red from the first round. Um, then the winner, then, yeah, Ferndale University versus Jalen Rose. That winner's taking on Detroit Country Day. Do you see any? Do you see this being a Ferndale Detroit Country Day District final? Uh, more than likely, yes. And, and there are, there's always a chance for upsets, but if you're looking on paper, I'd say yes. If there's a team that could upset anybody, it's Ferndale University. Um, they're a Jekyll and Hyde this year. Yes. Um, Josh Nix has done a nice job of that program, uh, but they're a Jekyll and Hyde. <laughs> uh, but until proven otherwise, this is going to be a Ferndale Detroit Country Day District final. What I'm seeing on paper, both teams are senior heavy. Um, both teams are talented. Um, Ferndale, it's basically for them, it's now or never. You know, they have Final Four aspirations in Division Two. Yeah. I mean, they got there last year. Um, so we'll see what happens. Yeah, they're they're hungry to yep. get back and even get beyond. Mm-hmm. District twenty nine at Troy. We got Troy versus Warren Cousineau. That winner's taking on Troy Athens. Troy Troy Athens stole the number two seed at that blowout of Seaholm, and Troy's lost to Lake Orion. Um and then you have um Warren Woods Towers, Warren Mott. That winner's taking on Warren D. LaSalle. Um, do you see any of the Troy schools knocking out the pilots? No. <laughs> really? I mean, I think Troy's got an outside so? shot. Yes. You think so? I think the Colts have an outside shot. I mean, they got players. I mean, Fairless there. Yeah. You got Kniper. Yeah, Kuiper there. You got Whiteside. Um, both Whitesides. Um. I mean, I mean, how Mason far Parker? have they gone? I mean, that's a. I, I guess my problem is history. How far have they gone? What do they look like leading into it? You know, I think Troy's got a shot at Warren. Um, over Warren DSL home court. Um, yeah, that's true. I they can, got I, a shot. Even I, Warren DSL's got a lot more experience. Yeah, I, you can't overlook the. Adva- I mean, mm-hmm. especially 
mm-hmm. in these one and done. Yes. Having the home court. Yeah, we talked about that on mm-hmm. the girls' side of things, too. Maybe talk me out of it. Happy sure, button. I can see them taking that. Sure. Okay. Home okay. field is huge, especially oh. if the crowd's there. I don't know what their crowd's like for them. If they have a they solid backing. They got a good backing, crowd, yep. That, that, that's at least five points. Mm-hmm. <laughs> It'll be interesting there in that one, but Troy Athens stealing the number two seed from Troy. I mean, like, could you just imagine how that would be in a regional semifinal, in a district semifinal be between awesome. those two teams? Yeah. Talk about teams that know each other. And and Troy beat Athens early in the year. Yeah, so. that'd be, uh, that'd be, that would be cool. That would mm-hmm. be a great matchup. Highly entertaining. It would be a good one. be a really good one. Um, really interesting matchup there if that were to happen. Um, District 27 at North Farmington, you have Farmington versus A&T. That winner is taking on Livonia Stevenson. Then you have Redford Thurston versus North Farmington. This is not a strong district. No. I mean, this is not. I mean, n- I don't see anybody touching North Farmington. Yeah, no. Um, Farmington gets the district final, but they've had a miserable year in the red. Yeah. I mean. Well, you know, it's time for makeup we've seen teams in the red just get manhandled in other sports and then show up in the postseason because Mm -hmm. they're not playing red teams anymore nope and this one's gonna be rough yeah that one's kind of mm-hmm yeah how do you like this one uh district 26 at royal oak you got royal oak versus detroit renaissance that winner's taking on um uad jesuit and then you have berkeley versus detroit mumford that winner's taking on oak park oak park and the boys had a nice year yeah Really nice here. I mean, they got Ashton Henderson there. They got um scoring points. Luana Miller there. I mean, Durant Shepard's done a really nice job with that team. Mm-hmm. Um, Berkeley, I, Berkeley, you you kind of want to think same old Bears. You know what I mean? <laughs> We've seen where this is, but to me, I don't think it's the same. I don't Berkeley think so team. either. No, you know, I mean, there was I had some thoughts about that last week, but they they're they're an improved team. I mean. They are really improved. Yeah. Um. So when you really look at at um this matchup here, I mean, like in this district here, UD Jesuit, Sonny Wilson on that team. Um, Detroit Renaissance taking on um, possibly taking on um, UD Jesuit. Be a real fun matchup there. Yeah, yeah. Now pending if they get by Royal Oak, Royal Oak's been playing much better. But I mean, are they playing well enough? That's a big question. <laughs> and then on the flip side, if Burke can get by Detroit Mumpers, I think they can. Um, then they got to play Oak Park. Imagine this rematch, UD Jesuit versus Oak Park. I mean, La- Oak Park should have beat them last year. Had not been for that four-point play they gave up. Oh, it was awful. It was real awful. That um, Ashton's little brother, um, Keon Henderson, he took a really bad foul. Yes. Gave Sonny Wilson a We saw the video play. of that. We saw the video of it. Oh, my God. That was, um, mm-hmm. I don't think I've ever seen anything like it because you're taking mm-hmm. a W yeah. and it's a loss. I mean, yeah. it you, yeah, it's unfortunate. It's just one of those, oh, my. And there wasn't any doubt no. that that was a foul. That was, yeah. It was four-point yeah. play. It's so rare, even under regular circumstances, let alone the postseason or mm-hmm. whatever, to snatch uh, the vic- feet out of the jaws of victory. You know, yeah. it's just brutal. That's brutal. Well, and then maybe you- they get a chance to make up for it. Maybe. And then that you would have, be awesome. Yeah, have West Bloomfield, that district growth versus Seaholm. That winner's taking on Orchard Lake St. Mary's. Oh, no, sorry. I'm taking on um, Burman, Burman Brother Rice. And then the um, West Bloomfield, Bloomfield Hills, that winner's taking on Orchard Lake St. Aries. Um, it's, it's tough. It, <laughs> pretty tough when you have both Catholic League yes. teams seated. And then you have Orchard Lake St. Mary's, who's supposed to be the team to beat in the state um in the state playoffs. Bloopy Hills, I think, has got a shot. They got experience. Um, they got them. Um, no, Adam Chicken shoot threes. Ben Canty. Um, I mean, do they like, need to play a perfect game? No, I don't think they do. I think they See, got a shot. If you if you're not one of those teams that you have to play that perfect game to make it happen, mm-hmm. then you have a shot. Then I see is the reality is you have a shot. I think they have a great shot to beat them. Now West Bloomfield played Bloomfield Hills really tight in their game um, last Friday night, so that'll be something to keep an eye on. And then you have Groves who just came off a um, who is should be motivated after last year's loss to Birmingham Brother Rice in the district semifinals. I think got a shot to beat them so if you really look at it here to me this is a 14 district i think 14's got great shots to win this district and i love those 
Yes. Because it just turns into chaos. I don't want to say chaos, but it turns into bedlam. And, mm-hmm. you know, it, it gives it, when you have four teams all with hope, mm-hmm. it makes for a great game. Mm-hmm. How do you like this for, a, for District 6? Clarkson's not the number one team in their district. When was the last time that was? Been a long time. Waterford Mott's a top team in their district. <laughs> which means Clarkson plays, which means um Clarkson gets the winner of S- who's D. <laughs> there no, it's a five teamer. C-B, but it's A B C D. Yeah, it's a five teamer. So that means, so basically that means if you're um Avondale, they take on Waterford Kettering. That winner gets Clarkson, and then Pontiac plays Waterford Mott. Don't be surprised if Waterford Mott gets upset by Pontiac. Really? Don't be surprised because Waterford Mott they've had a nice year, good year. Pontiac's very athletic. They had Dave Van Hall. We know yes. about Dave Van Hall. Yes. Um, and then you look at Clarkston. You know what I mean? They're now healthy again. Keegan wants to look back. Um, he played against Farmington at seven points, eight rebounds. Yeah. Um, so that's going to be just – until anybody touches Clarkston. you still I, I, picking him? I'm still picking Clarkston. Until otherwise, pick Clarkston. That's – Just us- pick Clarkston. That's usually my – my mantra, it's like, until you prove me otherwise. Just pick Clarkson. <laughs> Just pick Clarkson. <laughs> but it's it's so odd. Their season. Yeah, I know. I mean, it's... It, I, the I, Wasilic injury against Carmen Ainsworth. I mean, that changed everything. But they lost games with them in there. That is true. Right? In, in games, you're going, huh? Yeah. So, I mean, they do play tough teams. We cannot, yes. right, compared to other teams. Like Water Vermont, they play in the Lakes Valley. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's no uh, cupcake. Right. But wow, I'm telling you. Yeah, so that should be interesting to see, can they wake up? Uh, and then we got two more districts. We got the one at Davison. Um, Oxford's taking on Flint Kersley. That winner's taking on Davison. And then Lapeer taking oh, on Graham on. That's a brutal one. Yes, it is. So, if you're Oxford, especially what you've been through. Yeah. You're playing with nothing to lose. You're yeah. playing with nothing to lose, hey, everything man. to gain. Just I think they could beat Kersley. I play loose? Them. Yeah, I think they could beat Kersley. And then you have Lapeer taking on Grand Blank. I don't see anybody touching <laughs> Grand Blank in this district. They're so tough up there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there was a defending Division one state champ. Yes. They got R.J. Taylor on that team. They've been good for so long. Mm-hmm. And then you have Davison. Davis is a pretty young team. I think Oxford can get them. I really do. I think I, if Oxford can knock off Kersley, I think they can give Davis and Fitz. I know. I think they can beat him. I really do. And then if they get the Grand Blank, you know, it's going to be really tough sailing. Yeah, to have to go two wins to get to the final. Yeah, that's going to be tough. That's a lot of work. Yes, in a five team district. Yeah. yeah. And then you have District Five at Romeo. You got Lake Orion getting the top seed. There, they will get the winner of Romeo versus Utica Eisenhower. And then you have um. The Rattle of Rochester, you have Rochester taking on Stony Creek. That winner's taking on Adams. Um, mm. Looking at this district, what is your initial thoughts and process on this district? It's cool that Lake Orion's got the top seed, but Adams is gonna they be, can be it can be had. I, I think Adams is a team to really watch. Yes, I, I, I don't think it's I think it's open. It's going to be competitive, but I, I don't see uh, I don't know, man. It, it's not one like you see some of these teams in the the top seeds in these uh you know the seedings they're going yes mm-hmm. you go yeah Lake Orion should be there they mm-hmm. played well enough yes but Adams it's not a dominant no position and you for got them to be Adams in. there obviously Gunnar Walters there you got Brady Pre scoring you got Justice Mims yes um, and how are they coming in uh, to the postseason got Jacob Durant I mean yeah I mean Adams I saw Adams play. The other day against Stony Creek, and yeah. you know they, they, they're very interesting to keep an eye on. I mean, Justice. Question, the question too is matchups, mm-hmm. right? And styles. Rochester wasn't healthy the last time they played Adams, so now they're healthy. They're in the thick of a blue ra- in the blue race right now. Yeah. And could you just imagine a healthy Rochester taking on Adams? Yeah. That'd be a heck of a game. Yeah, it would. And then on the flip side, you got Romeo Eisenhower, of course. Both teams in the Mac White. Um, Romeo blew out Utica Eisenhower at Romeo. Utica Eisenhower turned the favor, blew out <laughs> Romeo at at Eisenhower. Well, so, it's at Romeo. It's at Romeo. So, 
And then could you just imagine if Lake Orion and Romeo had to play at Romeo? Lake Orion has been a more better team, oddly, on the road than at home. Really? Because but they Romeo, get up. That they, gym is cursed. It's got – there's something – There's it, bad, Remember, they changed gyms. I know. Oh, yeah, that's true. They changed gyms. Yeah, the new, yeah new, that's true. Yeah. New school. Yeah, new school. Okay, good. Yeah, they changed gyms. <laughs> You were thinking, you were no, thinking over but, at Thirty Two Mile. But old school. Oh, you're, God, th- that, you're thinking about the one at Thirty Two Mile. There's so many horror stories out of that gym for the Dragons over the. I mean, you mm-hmm. name it. From you name the sport, from mm-hmm. basketball to uh, whatever. Yeah, it's insane. It's insane. I mean, really insane, isn't it? it it's it's crazy. It is really, really crazy. Um, but uh, hey, new place, new place, new place. You know, new nothing. I mean, my goodness gracious. We got a weird. Beeping sound here in the studio. I don't wow. think it's coming through on the mic. I'm not no. sure what that is. I don't know what it is either. <laughs> We're at 56. Yeah. I mean, like, um, so what district are you looking at Look forward to right now in the boys' district? Well, being a Dragon fan, you know, and seeing what they did all year, it's 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 fun. It's, it's uh, you know, the, the way they started the season, they were limping along, and then all of a sudden they came on strong with a new uh, leadership. Mm-hmm. And um, not to be a homer, but I'm really excited to see if they can carry on Carry, that yeah. to the to the they end got a of, big week ahead of them. If they, they win do. both their games this week. They're white chance. Yes, which who who would have ever thought it? We thought kind of yes mm-hmm. at the beginning, of the, but it didn't look good to start. But no, it didn't. I mean, but I'm like, interested in that one, and um, I'm interested to see Clarkston. Clarkston that one at Water Vermont. Yes, that one's interesting. I want to see is this. The turning point for the wolves are they are they coming down to the level of everybody else? That is the are, big are question. Are they sliding a little? They've been sliding a little bit, you know what I mean? Because you know, but um, but it's still Clarkson. Um, I'm, it is. It's but still that, Clarkson. Those are the two I'm I'm looking. I'm at. watching the West Bloomfield district very carefully because you got both Catholic League teams. Yeah. Um, I think Bloomfield Hills and Groves, if they can get by the respective first round matchups, I think they're gonna pose some big time problems for um for um for the um for the Catholic League powers. And I'm also looking at that Troy district. I, I think Troy's got a yeah, yeah. good chance of pull off an upset. Um Kirsten, Especially if you can get her especially. rivals back together again. Sure. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Makes for a lot of fun. Mm-hmm. And then you got and then obviously the um, district with Ferndale and Detroit Country Day, that's a district final I'm looking forward to watching. And then, you know, the one at Harper Woods, I think, or the one at East Point, the 14 district. I think that's four yeah. teams that got a shot to win that district. So final thoughts, obviously. Um, you know, wish everybody best of luck. You know what I mean? In the postseason, March Madness, yeah, it, baby. It's here. It starts tonight. Yep, it's here. So excited. Yep. All right, everybody, I'm signing off here. Um, take care, everybody, and we'll see you all next week, everybody. See you, Sam. Boy and Al is produced by Sammy Terramino, and the views on this show are his and mine alone. You get a chance. Get out to the games. Cheer on these postseason players, man. It's March Madness. It's crazy. Ah! All right, that's it for this edition of Boy and Al. We'll see you next week. See ya.